Hi guys, welcome back to Saving Salvage and welcome back to the channel. In today's video guys, we'll be getting the Q5 into the workshop and doing a full service on it. Uh, something a little bit different in today's video, I'm going to be going more in depth. Um, a lot of people do ask for uh, more in depth videos of what I'm doing, so I thought the service uh, will be a perfect example of that, so I'm going to give it a go today. So we'll be getting a full service, it's done 38,000 miles, which means by Audi standards it's due a uh, fuel filter um, and a DSG S-Tronic uh, gearbox or a filter change as well guys. So stay tuned and let's crack on with a full service on the Q5. Right guys, Q5 is all in the workshop and I have set out my service bits here. So uh, just going to go through what we are doing today. So we have here um, our DSG oil. Uh, there's six litres of those, one litre bottles. We have up here an oil filter, air filter, cabin slash pollen filter. And we've got, our, um, this is our DSG filter here. And we've also got our fuel filter here as well. Um, and I have some oil kicking around somewhere as well. So guys, the number plates are on the way. They should be here any day now. And it is booked in to go to the body shop. Um, some of you might have noticed from the pictures that the polo is actually missing. It was parked just over there. Uh, that is now at the body shop. So I still can't get any interior for that. Um, I've, got, I've had offers of three door interior but I'm still trying to find a five door interior. So that has now gone to the body shop to be done because there's nothing else I can really do with it at the moment. So, which is why we are working on the Q5 today. So let's get it up in the air, get the bonnet open and start doing this service. Well guys, uh, apologies up front if this is a bit too much uh, boring information for you guys, but a lot of people do actually request more in-depth videos about what I'm doing. So I thought today would be a good example. Um, so I'm going to do an in-depth service on this car. So at times there might be a bit of silence or etc. while I am obviously trying to do what I'm doing. So bear with, um, but we will crack on. So the way I service cars, I believe to be the correct way of doing it. Um, it's the way I've done it all my life. So um, we'll start with the oil filter. So just pop this cover off, should pop off nicely. Put that to one side. All looks nice and clean under here. I'm going to quickly get my torch. So the first thing I'm actually going to do with the engine cover off is just have a look around for any obvious leaks, uh, whether it be fuel or oil. Uh, quite a common problem with these is the EGR cooler leaks and you'll get, basically obviously this is a V6, so you've got a V in here essentially, um, and when the oil cooler leaks you get a puddle of uh, coolant sat in the V. So just going to have a look down here just to make sure it's all dry and it is, looks very nice and dry indeed. Yeah, there's definitely no coolant down there, so that's good. And then just looking around, see if there's any other maybe fuel or oil leaks at all, but it all looks absolutely fine. I mean, it should be, it has only done 38,000 miles. There's just a bit of oil residue around the filler cap, which is perfectly normal because people can't aim. No, nope, that all looks good to me. So what we'll do now is get a, a socket and spanner to undo the top of that. Gently, because these can be quite, oh no, that was nicely, nicely not over tightened, which is rare. So we'll just undo that. And what we want to do first is just to let all the oil run back into the sump. So just pull it, it can be quite tight now. Just pull it up. And you heard that gulp. And I'll just leave it like that for a few minutes. Just to let the oil run into the sump. Undo the power steering fluid. And just check the level of that. It's, on, it's actually got two different settings on this. I don't know if you can see. If it's going to focus or not. But it's got two different min and maxes. One's for cold, one's for hot. So for cold, it's on the max. Which is good and it is cold. So 
Um, that's fine. So that's a power steering fluid, all good. Next, what we can do as well is uh, we can take the air filter lid off, get all the bits up here done first. So I'll just whip the cover off this, which is T25. That should come up nicely. And it doesn't look in too bad a condition, to be fair. And we've got you've got two smaller torque screws here, which just hold the air filter in. So it doesn't look in too bad a nick. That comes off nicely. Just check the air box, make sure there's nothing in the air box. So that's your old air filter. Get the new one in and screw that into position. I don't think the screws, I think they're centered, yeah. All right, that's a new filter screwed on, so now we will just sit it back in position. Just make sure it's nice and square and in position properly, which it is. I was just checking the old filter, my mine went blank then because I was like, there should be an O-ring on this air filter and there should be an O-ring that sits in here that just seals the air filter um, into the air box. And there wasn't one on the old one and the new one also didn't come with an, uh, an O-ring. So um, off camera then, I've just phoned up Audi parts which are now open, or well, my local one is, and they have one in stock, bloody 10 pound for an O-ring. So I've ordered an O-ring uh, that sits in there and I'm gonna go pick that up tomorrow when it's in. So for the moment, it's very easy to do. It only sits in here, so we can just put that back in for the moment. It's not gonna affect anything. What I'm going to also do while I'm here is top up the coolant. Check me out with me genuine coolant. Well, I need a tad of this. This is concentrate, so just a little bit. Up to the max, that is fine. Usually, uh, with if you buy concentrated coolant, it's usually a 50-50 mix, um, but it all depends, because a lot of people sell ready mix stuff, which you have to pour in as is, um, but if it is concentrate, then it's usually about 50-50. That's that done, so our oil filter should be nice and drained by now. Just pull the top off. Get rid of the old filter. So with the new filter, you have to be careful because there is a little, put a bit of oil on this O-ring and there is a slot for this to sit in. So um, you can have a look at down the filter, you can see it. In this case, it's sitting at roughly 7 p.m. So we just stick it in at 7 p.m. Give it a twist and then it clicks down like that. And now we can put a new O-ring on. And then you just want to put a layer of oil all the way around it so it doesn't snag when you're putting it back in. And you can just put it back on. There we go. And if you want to torque this up, it says on the cap how much to do it to. And in this case, it's 35 newton meters, but I have done enough of those or enough of these to know exactly what 35 newton meters is. It's about that. But obviously I advise you, if you're not doing it, if you're doing it for the first time, to torque it up properly. The last thing you want to do is over torque one of these because they are only plastic, so you can quite easily snap the housing if you over tighten them. So just clean up residue, oil residue around the top of the filter. And we're not going to put the oil filter, uh, sorry, we're not going to put the engine cover back on just yet because what we'll have to do is when we run up the car, we just need to make sure that the oil filter housing doesn't leak because uh, it can be quite common, uh, especially in replacing the O-rings, that the, the new O-ring does leak. So that is it for under here. The fuel filter on this is underneath, um, but what we are gonna do is also, just to make the oil drain out easier and faster flowing, just remove the cap. Just remove the cap and just set it on there. And now we'll get the car in the air. So to remove the under tray, you will need a T25, a flathead or a posi head, a screwdriver, 
and just like one of these type tools, little prongs, just to remove the two clips, um, which is for the under tray under the gearbox. So we'll remove that one first because it sits under the engine under tray one. Right, so with the under tray off, it all looks nice and clean under here. There's no oil leaks. It all looks nice and good. So, first thing we're going to do now is undo the oil um, sump bump. Crack it off. And then it comes out straight away. There we go. Well, guys, so we're going to let that drain. And while that's draining, we're going to go over and change the fuel filter. So the fuel filter on these guys is located under this long under tray here. So what we've got to do is it comes in two sections. There's this section here and then the bigger one here. So we need to remove this section fully and hopefully we can just half remove this section just by undoing it down this side and the two at the back and just folding it round and being able to access um, the fuel filter there. So uh, we need a 10 mil and a little screwdriver to remove those clips to get that untray off. So these type of fuel filters are usually quite messy. There's nothing you, there's nothing you can really do to avoid a bit of mess, but there is this little bracket with two 10 mil nuts holding it on. the filter and that's just a inline fuel pump so this is what we're changing this bit here so what I'm probably going to do to start with is just remove this wire so it's out of the way and doesn't try and get fuel stuck all over it so the first thing I want to do is to remove this one here and then the filter can drop into the oil drainer and just drain all the fuel out of this filter to try and avoid as much mess as possible Right, so that's now dripping, so now we'll undo the other side as well. So let's get it ready to put in. And look at that. Hardly, oh no, this mess. Oh no, it's me treading on a leaf. There we go, that's that back on. And now we're going to get this end back in as well. On and then. Right, there we go. That went quite well, not much mess. And there we go, that is the fuel filter done. So next we're gonna move on to the S-Tronic oil and filter. So we're gonna drain the oil out of the gearbox and we're, the drain bung is here, which is a 10 mil Allen key. So I'm just gonna get the 10 mil. Who's done this? Jesus. Right, so as you can see, that is draining really slowly at the moment. And that's because we want to crack off our filling bung. The filling bung is on the side of the gearbox here. It's very easy to see. It's only about three inches up from the bottom of the pan. Once we crack that off, the oil will flow out a lot quicker and drain a lot quicker. There we go, look. Pouring out now. So while that's draining, we're gonna get the, uh, the oil filter, which for the gearbox, which is don't know if you can see it, but it's here. It's just a little cylindrical filter, and it's just on the side of the gearbox, and that has a 17mm um, cap to unscrew it with. So 
we'll just undo that. And then we'll pull the filter out. Let that drop into there. And what we'll do is we'll just, again, a little bit of oil around the O-ring, just so it doesn't snag when you put it back in, and then just fit that, and then refit that as well. And actually, on the housing itself, there is a little tag and um, once you go past it, it slots in, it slots down, and that is as tight as you need to go. So there you go, look, as you can see on the draining as well, it's now started dripping, so I consider that empty. So if we just put a new O-ring on a sump bung, like so, and do that back up. Again, talk this up. I can't remember the torque settings if I'm honest, but I'm sure if you can Google it, it will tell you. But as I say, I've done enough of these to know exactly how tight they should be. So that's all in position. So now, the filler plug. The filler plug is, as you can see here, look, and that is where we're gonna put all our oil. So with these, it's usually between sort of five and seven liters. Um, Audi will try and sell you seven. Realistically, you probably only need just over five. Um, but what we'll do is, is, you can't really do it wrong anyway. It, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill this up here um, until it starts coming out. So fill it right up to this level here. We'll start clicking out. And then we wanna quickly put the bung back in, tighten it up, and there is a procedure which you need to do to make sure this is at the right level. Right, so this is our DSG oil fluid and it comes with the, a little spout for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip it up, obviously with the cap off, and we're just gonna fit it up there, angle the end into the gearbox and let it trickle in. Um, it does go very slowly because it can't breathe, so a little trick. Once you've taken this cap off, just hold your finger over it, tip it upside down, which I'll show you in a second, and just stab a hole in the bottom, and that will let it breathe and flow out a lot quicker. So just to show you quickly, Cap off, finger over the bottom, tip it upside down, and just stab a few holes in the top, and then that'll flow out a lot quicker. It, this can be a bit messy, to be honest. It's not really a good way. I'm sure there's a special tool, but. It does get a little bit messy, but it's only a little bit, shouldn't be too bad. So guys, I've just loaded it back on the ground. I have just stuck um, around about five liters of oil and I believe these take 6.4 from memory. Um, so I've stuck, I think it's actually about five and a half liters and I've stuck, uh, but these three liter TDIs don't actually have a dipstick. Well, they do, it's here. However, it's not a dipstick, that is just a cap. Believe it or not, um, there is a special tool to use as a dipstick if you want to use this, uh, and that is because the dipstick on these is electronic. So the only way to do it is through the MMI on the dash uh, to get the reading. But weirdly, the engine has to be warm for that to happen. So we've stuck, um, so I've stuck about five and a half liters in, and then we need to run it for a couple of minutes to get semi-warm, um, and then we can check the oil level. So guys, I just let the car idle for about five minutes uh, and turn the car off, turn the ignition back on and you can see, look, you can get your oil level display here. So you can see it's nearly at maximum. It does slowly creep up as it's detecting more and more. So there you go, look, as you can see, it's just gone up again. So that will hopefully, hopefully be on max soon. Um, and then we can do the S-Tronic. So I've just jumped in the car. So the process for checking the DSG oil fluid, if you remember, we left it with it um, just trickling out. We filled up, we put about four, I think I put about four and a bit liters in uh, the side of the gearbox, it started trickling out. So now what we have to do is we have to start the car. I'm still trying to work out that fuel filter. Look. 
And then foot on our brake, you just want to go through the gears, holding it in each gear for a few seconds, just to get the oil going around the gearbox. And then back to park. And now we can leave it, leave it idling. We'll jump back outside. As what you want to do now is let the gearbox warm up to about 40 degrees temperature. So I've plugged in Vagcom and I've gone into transmission. Sorry if you can hear me, I've got the engine literally right there. Um, we've gone into measured values and I've selected, I've just started writing temperature. Transmission fluid temperature has come up here and as you can see it's at 24 degrees. So you need to wait for that to get to between 35 and 40 degrees to then check the oil level. So I'm going to fast forward, I'll come back when we're at 40 degrees. Right there you go guys, it's up to 36 degrees. So now what we want to do is we need to leave the engine running, put the ramp in the air. Right, so now the engine's in the air and it's running. Sorry, obviously the engine's running so it's going to be a bit harder to hear me. But with it running, we now want to remove the gearbox bung and top it back up. So, oh sorry, it's over here, look, bloody hell. So we want to remove the bung, uh, the filler bung, and then try and fit some more oil. And we'll probably get another sort of two to 300 million, um, and then again, wait for it to flow, start flowing out again. And then you put the bung in, do it up tight, torque it up, and that is then the gearbox oil at the correct level. So that is now full. Don't worry about leaving it to drip. Just close it off now. It's now the gearbox all level done. Right guys, so I've just loaded it back on the ground and I've just gone on to, um, I've already done it, so let's just go back. So VCDS main menu, I've just gone on to SRI reset, which is service reminder. Gone onto the reset, it's read all the details. Right, so it shows you all the current values and obviously the new values you can input. I've already reset the service light, but for this, guys, it's just a drop-down menu, uh, flexible all-service reset, and then it's long life Great Britain, and then also a time-based reset rest of the world and Great Britain as well. So I've done both of those two, and that has reset the um, time-based interval inspection and the flexible oil-based inspection. So they're both now reset. And as you can see there, the service reminder alert, 12,000 or two years and 14 and a half thousand or two years. So that is the service reminder all reset as well. So guys, that is, I think, everything done. So engine oil level's been checked. Everything's done. Gearbox is all done. All the filters are done. So now I've just got to pop out to Audi and buy this um, seal that was missing on the airbox. So I'm going to go do that now. So I've just gone down to Audi to buy this nice little O-ring for the air filter. So let's just install that. It should be nice and simple. There you go. That's our right. That's our air filter done. So get rid of that. And now what we're going to do? Now we're all done to here, guys. We can check the oil filter as well. That is not leaking, so that's fine. So now we can put the uh, engine cover back on. And there you go, just like that, it's all done. Right guys, that's all we got time for in today's video. So I hope you enjoyed it, something a little bit different, a bit more in depth. Uh, we've done a full service on the Q5. So as always guys, if you do enjoy these videos, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, please do head over to my Instagram page, which is saving underscore salvage. The Q5 is all done. It is back in the air because I'm just going to fit the under trays. You don't need to see that again. Once the under trays are done, that car is now done. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you the next episode where I will be revealing the cost of the car. So. I'm going to do a full cost breakdown because I'll have had my quote from the body shop um, so I'd have known exactly what the cars now cost once we've done the service as well. So all will be revealed in the next episode, guys. So as always, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.